Hey there, Mr. Bill here, and today I'm going to show you how to make uh, SoundCloud style subs um, with Drum Bus. And I call them SoundCloud style subs because, <clears throat> well, you hear them a lot on SoundCloud basically. And I think uh, if you've spent a bunch of time going through SoundCloud, you'll kind of know the sub that I'm talking about. It's like that, that distorted, really transient, heavy, low mid heavy type sub that's popular, I feel like, in future bass music. Um, <clears throat> you know, stuff like maybe some of Mr. Carmack's stuff and some of Katrin Yada, or I, I can't pronounce his name, um, and some of like Oshi's stuff and, and that kind of music. Um, <clears throat> and I thought it was interesting how much they were sort of like pushing the sub. And I always wondered like how to make it. And ever since Live 10 came out, I kind of figured out a way to do it that I feel like sounds quite believable. So uh, here's the, the little section that I'm working on here that kind of sounds like that sub exists in. And then I have this layer here that we can turn on if we really want to. And then there's actually another layer. This was, I've done a couple of tutorials using this project file at this point. But yeah, we're not interested in these layers right now. We're just interested in how the sub was made. So <clears throat> what I did, and I'll remake this, but the premise behind it is just to take a short transient, like uh, right now I'm using this short little kick. So if we just um, turn everything off and just listen to the kick, it's literally just like a really, it's basically like an impulse to feed into drum bus. And then with drum bus, we're using this boom section that exists within there to uh, create like resonance and, and low end feedback basically. So that's just the kick by itself. And then with drum bus. So you can hear that kind of sounds like a subby kick now. And then I just have an EQ here at the end, just sort of um, taking away some of that top end and just getting rid of some of the high frequencies and whatnot to just make it a bit more, uh, I don't know, low fi sounding. So if you wanted to remake this yourself, this is how you would do it. Basically, uh, <clears throat> just find a short kick sample of any sort, really. Um, let's see. This actually would work fine if it was just the other way around. So we can edit this. So we just hit R in Ableton Ten, it reverses for us. Uh, and then I want to set the start point from here. So right click, set start point, um, edit the end off, consolidate that, drag it into the MIDI channel so it's in a simpler. And actually we don't really need to go further than a simpler if we don't want to, but we can if we like. Uh, and then create an envelope here of some sort. So I'll put this MIDI clip on this channel and turn this channel off and then we can mess around with it. So what note is this? The note currently is F2. <clears throat> so in sampler, you have to kind of set what the root note is. So if I say the root note is F2, then it will play it back at its natural pitch. But by default, that root note is always at C3. So if I wanted it to play back at its natural pitch using the MIDI clip, I would just have to arrow these notes up until the majority of them were sitting on C3 and then they'd be playing back at their natural pitch. So you kind of define like what the natural pitch point is using this root key. So if our notes were all on F2, we would define that to be F2 and then the sampler would go like, okay, when I get an F2, I'll play back the sample at, at its regular pitch and then anything below an F2, I'll transpose the sample down. Anything above an F2, I'll transpose the sample up. So we have our impulse here. So what we're going to do now is use drum bus here to, <clears throat> uh, and we're going to use the boom section of it to create a uh, sub pretty much. So if we turn this boom up, you'll hear what happens. You can hear it starts feeding back. And if you click this button here, it just snaps to the nearest note. So you can see if I go to 60.3 hertz, that's almost a B. But if I press this, you can see it goes to 61.7. It just snaps to the nearest note. Uh, and then I guess this little plus means it's a little bit sharp. And this little minus means it's a little bit flat. And then we can control the decay here. And there's also this solo button. So if you wanted to get rid of uh, that high frequency stuff completely, you could just solo this. And 
this point you could just leave the the thing soloed uh the only thing is when you change midi notes there is no key tracking on drum bus there might be like a max for live thing that listens to the midi notes on the channel and then changes the frequency knob based on that but currently i haven't really been doing that um and i don't know if that exists but uh, if you're a max for live developer uh go nuts because that would actually be kind of cool <clears throat> so the next thing that we can do is we can actually just automate the frequency and that's something that i have been doing uh and and i find that that kind of uh it just sounds sort of interesting to uh you know just have the, the sub bending all over the place rather than actually hitting notes You know, something like that. It's kind of interesting, I feel like. Uh, and then we actually have these sort of bonus things here. We have a drive and a crunch tool. And this is when it starts to sound a bit sound cloudy, in my opinion. Because it starts getting that crazy, like, uh, overly accentuated low mid type stuff happening. And we can go into an EQ and mess with it a bit. So it's a good way to kind of add the harmonics in. And then if you turn the solo button off, you can see what it sounds like with everything. And what I've been enjoying doing is sometimes turning that solo button off and then just EQing the high frequencies out. So that would sound like this. Yeah, I don't know. I I thought it was an interesting way to build subs just uh using the like this this boom section of the drum bus. I thought it was kind of a nice way to to just I don't know. It's a different way to do it. Uh it's definitely not the cleanest way to do it. The cleanest way to do it would just be with a synth using a sine wave and maybe a little bit of distortion or something like that, I feel like. But for me, this is just something that I would do if I was trying to make, you know, a slightly trashier type of song or a slightly more characteristic type of sub and and you could also i don't know go as hard or, or as soft as you want with the drive here and the crunch and the dampening the dampening is basically a filter as well so this high frequency removal that i was doing here you can kind of do that with dampening so you can hear if it's all the way up it's a lot more snappy but if we turn it all the way down kind of takes away that that snappy top end and you could also remove some of the top end here in the sampler as well before it even hits the drum bus and if you boost a section here on the filter like create a resonant spike then maybe that will exacerbate the drum bus in different ways and you also have a shaper on the sampler here that you could use to mess with more distortion if this wasn't enough Um, I hope you enjoyed that trick. That was just a cool little idea that I came up with. Uh, basically, the day Live 10 came out, actually, I pulled this out and I was like, yeah, that's a cool idea. Um, and I figured I, I'd do a tutorial on it. And yeah, if you enjoyed the tip, let me know. And if you create anything cool with it, chuck your whip in the comments. I'm sure everyone would love to hear it. And yeah, have a good day. Bye.